Some of these new ransomware actors out there lately, they've found creative ways to compromise company enterprises. So, hey, John, we have a story this week about a city getting hit with some sort of ransomware. Uh, yeah, the city of Atlanta, actually five, I guess, of its 13 offices um, got hit with uh, what's called the Sam Sam ransomware. The thing that's interesting about this one is that the way this attacker behaves, that actor probes their target's public internet facing infrastructure and then tries to find weaknesses in there, like easy to guess passwords, and then they'll pivot into the company from there. And they target these kind of rich targets where, when I say rich, I mean where they think they might pay off. So uh, government agencies, um, healthcare, and a lot of times they'll actually target, they're not gonna target a big government institution, they're gonna target smaller little city things where they're hopefully gonna be able to get their ransom paid. These guys are really um, surgical in who they target and how they target them. So uh, an interesting actor, but also a very talented uh, adversary to deal with. They, they use very advanced techniques. Typically, I, I guess it depends on what your perspective is, but when we watch botnet activity, we're generally looking for these beaconings of command and control activity back. So, and that works very well for ransomware things like WannaCry and some of these other ones where they target you know, the endpoint users, because those devices beacon out to some central command and control. You can look for that. You can find out how many infected devices you have. In this case, they're kind of like one guy weasels his way into a server, the attacker does, and then he's moving around uh, his way inside there. So unless you have really, it's, it's very quiet, I guess, and stealthy the way they, that they operate, Sam Sam. I wonder if, you know, the, you know, you look at the, the targets that are chosen, you know, clearly, if you think like a malicious actor and you're trying to pick the targets that you're going after, clearly what you're going to pick is those things like healthcare, right? That you know have data that's worth something. They're finding these organizations that do have a lot of public um, interfaces or touch points where the public is going to need their services that they provide. So when they get hit with ransomware, they probably need to get back on their feet really quickly and they might be more willing to pay that ransom because they can't deal with an extended period of out time, you know, especially a, a hospital. And any knowledge outside of that company or whatever, any knowledge of that data being encrypted equates to losing the data, right? right. So, and you can't afford anybody to even think that you've lost the data, even if in the ransomware case, there may actually not be any theft of data itself, right? You may not, the ma bad actors may not pull any data back. Right. They may just literally just encrypt it, have the keys, and just be waiting for the ransomware. Um, but, you know, out in the public, anybody who hears ransomware is going to probably associate loss of data, and that's going to jack the price up of how much you can ask for, you know, the de decryption. Right. So it's kind of a different tactic than we see a lot with ransomware, which usually like spear phishing or worm-like behavior like WannaCry is. With this, the actor is not using phishing campaigns. They're not uh, just randomly throwing it out there hoping to get paid. They're, they're thinking through it. They're probing the network. They're getting in via you know, sneakier means. And once they feel that they're comfortable enough to have it spread through that network a much, you know, to flip it on, then they can ask for an amount that they feel pretty confident that they're going to get. So there's, it's, it's, a, it's an evolution of how ransomware is, is turning into uh, compared to when it first started. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they're more surgical in the way that they uh, approach their targets, yeah. as opposed to some of these other ransomwares that act like worms and like WannaCry was very indiscriminate as to who it hit. It just kept trying to find new machines to infect and it just infected everybody it could. Right. They, these guys, they, do, they, they, they pick a target and then they get in there. They don't just let something right. go run just, wild right. trying to find infection, you know, uh, devices that are compromisable, so. Yep. In this case, I think what, you know, what we have to sort of tell our viewers is 
make sure that you're patched, right? I mean, most of the vulnerabilities that they're exploiting are vulnerabilities that are well known and that there is a patch for. Also having a really good awareness of what you actually have that is internet facing. Sometimes people don't realize how much is being exposed to the internet, the public internet, and having really good uh, inventory of those assets as well as the software that's on them.